Good day YouTube and welcome back to the Trooper's Garage. It's that time of year again so you know what the Trooper's doing. He's building some Halloween props. This year I didn't have a lot of time to do all the projects that I wanted to but I chose a couple of quick ones. Uh, this one's going to be a video on how to build a witch's cauldron. You know that classic big black cauldron with all the bubbling water and the mist coming out? Well that's what we're going to build today. So without further ado let's get started. Some of the main ingredients we're going to use for this project is a black plastic uh, Halloween kettle or cauldron, fake flame effects LED lamp, a hanging basket uh, shepherd's hook, some black P cord, and a couple of S hooks electronic water mister with LED effects and maybe just a little bit of uh, spiced rum and pipe tobacco to keep those uh, creative juices flowing alright starting off by putting that shepherd's hook in the ground where this whole setup is going to be in my yard and then taking some quick measurements to uh, figure out how low I want the kettle hanging uh, in relation to the fire and everything else so we're going to start off by getting rid of that plastic handle that's on this kettle um, it's really brittle I'm pretty sure it's going to break uh, at some point and I don't want it dumping this entire project all over the ground um, so we're going to start off by getting those S hooks in place and then I'm going to replace that plastic handle uh, with that P cord and <laughs> there's the first snag of the project. The, those S hooks aren't even near big enough um, to go uh, inside the holes. And rather than cutting the plastic down or making the holes bigger, I think I'm just going to bypass them entirely. And uh, we'll just put the uh, P cord in through the holes uh, and just knot them up and hang it that way. All right. So, yeah, we're just going to skip over the S hooks. And uh, I'm going to melt the end of uh, my P cord to get started off with so it doesn't fray and pull out and everything. Be really careful when you do that, right? That nylon gets super hot and it'll give you a blister. So let's take a break. Quench our thirst with a nice cold refreshing beer. Ah, all right, it's nice and cooled down. We can go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to do like a figure eight follow through knot on this. It really doesn't matter. Use whatever knot you want to, um, even just a square overhand granny knot. It doesn't really matter as long as it's big enough to where it's not going to pull out of that hole, obviously. All right, got those tied up, and let's check it out. Yep, looks pretty good. And I'm going to take it outside real quick just to double check that the length is correct. So as it stands right now, this plastic kettle looks exactly like a plastic kettle. Um, it actually has some really nice texture uh, on the outside of it that I want to kind of highlight to bring out um, with um, some varying uh, colorations and I also want to make it look like it's well used and weathered. So we're going to go ahead and prep this real quick and put some paint on it to make it look a little bit more realistic. Well, the first step in any kind of painting project, obviously, is cleaning and prepping the surface. Get all those oils and fingerprints and dirt and dust off there so we get good adherence of the paint. Uh, I know everybody watching this right now is probably cringing a little bit, and for good reason. I was not wearing gloves, and I definitely should have been um, since I was using acetone for this project. Um, so, good safety tip there. Always wear gloves when you're uh, using toxic chemicals like this. That was my bad. With the surface prepped, I'm going to go ahead and get my paint ready. Um, so this is just the first thing I grabbed off my shelf. It's just a, gr a gray primer. Um, it doesn't really matter if it's 
uh, primer or regular house paint or whether or not you're using hobby paints uh, any kind of acrylic uh, or even an enamel paint will work fine with this the point is is that you want to use kind of a light gray color um, and that gray color when we dry brush it onto the kettle is really going to make that texture pop and then it's going to give us a nice undercoating uh, for the colors that are going to follow up and it's really going to make those stand out a lot more than if we just put the other colors on top without the gray. So uh, I'm going to grab a uh, scrap piece of cardboard and I'm going to use this to basically get all the paint off the brush. I'm going to dip it on, get a little bit in there, and then work the brush back and forth on the piece of cardboard until there's almost no paint left on the brush. And then I'm going to lightly go over the kettle and what little paint is on the brush will just hit those highlight edges and really make that texture pop out real nice. So I'm not dunking the whole brush in. I'm just getting a little bit on the bristle ends. And then I'm just getting the majority of the paint off. And then now I'm working that brush back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And I'm trying to get rid of 99.9% .9 of the paint on the brush. And then the nice thing about using cardboard is it, that corrugated cardboard is the edges of the corrugation start to show up. And once you get to where it's just barely highlighting those edges, that's when you know that's the perfect amount of paint on the brush. And you can go ahead and, yep, right there, like I'm showing you. And then you can go ahead and start applying it to your project. All right, so just light strokes back and forth. Oops, that was a little bit more than I wanted, which that's okay. So I'm going to go back to the cardboard, and I'm going to really, really mash out those bristles. Ah, there it is. Okay, see how that texture is starting to come out now? I still had just a little bit too much paint on there. So we're going to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until almost all of that paint is out of the brushes. And then real nice and light. I'm not mashing it in. All right, see how it's collecting on that edge right now already? That's standing out real good. That's exactly what we want. If you make a mistake, no big deal. Just take a wet rag, you can wipe it off and start over again. And sometimes if you end up getting little blemishes, it kind of makes it look a little bit more real anyways. Just real lightly back and forth, back and forth. With the kind of texture that's on this pot, You'll notice, yep, there's a little mistake I made right there. I just wet my finger and wiped it off a little bit. But you'll also notice I'm going kind of back and forth horizontally. And then I change my brush stroke and I go up and down vertically. And that's just because of the way the texture is on this pot. Um, kind of goes all around, all over the place. So I want to make sure I get the vertical lines as well as, as, well as the horizontal ones. All right, and here's a close-up of just that one section. As you can see, look at how that texture is popping out already. Now I'm going to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until I'm satisfied, but you can tell just a minute or two of this dry brushing technique is really starting to make that texture pop and making this kettle look a lot more interesting. All right, let's see what we got so far. Oh, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. That texture's uh, really popping out. The contrast between the lows and the highs is coming out well. It's making the kettle look more interesting, more real. 
So I think I'm going to spend a couple more minutes on those sharp edges. Uh, and I'm just concentrating my brush bristles now real hard on those sharp edges uh, along uh, kind of the outside of the kettle because I really want those to uh, stand in like a stark contrast against the rest of it and kind of make it pop out real nice. So I'm going to use what little paint I got left in my brush and I'm going to go ahead and do some of that edge highlighting there. Now that I'm happy with those gray highlights, I'm going to continue on with a, a kind of chocolate brown color um, that I just had sitting around the house. I used it uh, in the hallways of our home. And this is going to start kind of the rust colorations on the kettle to uh, make those highlights look a little bit more weathered and a little bit more used. Um, so contrary to popular belief, rust isn't actually like an orange color. It's more like your raw sienna, burnt siennas, raw umbers, burnt umbers. And this brown color fits right into um, uh, that kind of... Uh, I just lost my train of thought. Anyways, um, so yeah, it, it's different shades of browns. So I'm going to use this shade of brown kind of like I did with the gray. I'm going to get most of the uh, paint out of my brush. And uh, I'm going to uh, highlight or dry brush over that gray. Uh, and again, you don't have to use, um, you know, exterior latex paint. Um, you can use pretty much any kind of acrylics, hobby acrylics, hobby enamels. The process uh, is exactly the same, no matter what kind of paints you're using. Uh, just if you're going to use several different shades of brown, maybe consider going from dark brown to like lighter browns and kind of work your way up um, from the dark to the light of the spectrum and then you just go lighter and lighter and lighter on not only on your colors but on your brush strokes too and with my brush prepped with the brown paint the process is just the same uh, as it was with the grape paint, just lightly dry brushing over those highlights. And now we're just depositing a different color to get a little bit of added realism in it. All right, let's take a second and see what we got. Uh, it's not showing up really awesome in this light, but oh, there it is. Yeah, look at that. So we got that texture um, is popping out. Got a real nice contrast between the black and the gray. And now we've added um, that kind of chocolate brown color. And on top of that gray, that is really starting to look like rust. This is starting to look like an old rusty not very well taken care of cauldron exactly what you would expect some witches to be brewing up some kind of trouble in so before i got started on the construction phase of this i went ahead and put the misters inside a practice tub to see how it worked and i wasn't really that impressed with the amount of mist um, coming out of the container. I want way more than that. Uh, so we're going to have to tweak this project a little bit. One of the things I tried was removing this little shield uh, from above the misters to see if that helped. And it did somewhat. There's uh, a lot more mist coming out of the container right now. Uh, there's also this, uh, there's a lot of water bubbling out of it too, which is going to make a mess, but I think it looks a lot cooler this way. Yeah. 
So because that mist isn't making it out that far out of the container, we're going to have a problem if we just take our misters and set them down in the bottom of this deep cauldron. That mist is only going to make it a few inches above and then it's not going to come out of the cauldron. It's not going to be visible. It's not going to roll up and over the edges kind of like that classic bubbling witch's cauldron is. Um, so we're basically going to have to make a container within a container and kind of elevate those misters up a lot closer to the edge uh, so we can kind of see what's going on in there. All right, so put your phone down, son. What are you doing? All right. <clears throat> Back to the video. Here's my solution for that. So I have this old Tupperware container that happens to fit uh, just perfectly inside the kettle. Um, so I think that's what we're going to put these misters in. And then that's going to be kind of mounted uh, up towards the upper edge of the kettle. Uh, so we can get that fog to be rolling out of there real nice. Um, so one of the problems, though, is, is that the... Uh, the height, the wall, uh, the height, the wall, the wall height uh, of this particular container is still a little bit too tall. And also, too, I don't like the way the wires are kind of hanging over the edge uh, of that. So I think we're going to A, uh, cut down the height of the container, and then B, I'm probably going to cut some channels into the side uh, so I can uh, do a little dab uh, of a uh, clear caulk or something to kind of glue them in there so they're not moving around too much. The manufacturer of the misters recommends about two or two and a half inches of water inside a container for those to work optimally. So I'm going to take a couple of different measurements uh, around the outside and the inside of the bowl just to make sure I'm cutting it correctly. And then we're going to mark and cut it. And now that's all marked up, I'm going to use my Dremel drill and a circular woodcutting saw blade. Perfect fit so far. On with the show. I didn't really like how the wires were just kind of sitting in that tub all haphazard and tangled up. So I did a couple things. First thing, uh, just drilled uh, some half inch holes on the back side of the kettle um, to keep the wires from getting all tangled up, but also so I could feed them through the back. They wouldn't be visible. Um, to people coming up my driveway and then I could run them back to the shepherd's hook down the shepherd's hook uh, and then to where my plug is going to be providing uh, power to those so I'm just feeding those wires in through there right now and as you can see from this shot I went ahead and cut some notches in the back um, of the uh, plastic water reservoir uh, to keep those lines from getting tangled up. And then I'm going to secure them, I think, with a dab of hot glue uh, just to keep those from moving around. Now, with the way I'm going to have this set up with the water container inside the kettle, it's going to leave a gap for all that water condensation to kind of drip down the sides. It's going to collect down into the bottom of the kettle. So I think I'm going to drill a hole uh, in the center there because that's kind of the low spot where that water is going to collect and that way it can kind of leak out throughout the night. So I'm just going to do like a you know, like a half inch hole down at the bottom there for that to drip out and then I think too that water is going to collect uh, inside the legs of the kettle um, so I'm going to go ahead and drill those out real quick also.
Okay, so there's a couple of steps that I did that unfortunately my GoPro uh, didn't video, which is fine. Um, I mean, it's it's overall pretty easy, so I'll just kind of tell you about it. So I took I took my uh, kind of inner sleeve piece right here, and what I did was I hot glued each of the uh, atomizers onto its little stand, and then hot glued that. Uh, onto the container. Reason being is, is that when you're pouring water in and out of the containers, these have a tendency of rolling over or floating off or moving around. And I wanted them kind of in the center for like the max boiling effect for steam. So again, these got hot glued onto the little stand here, and then those got hot glued onto this container. And then I ran my wires back and just put a couple dabs of hot glue here, here, and here, just to keep the wires from moving around. Uh, and then I have them zip tied so they're not getting all tangled up. And then I can feed them through the back uh, of the uh, kettle. All right, one of the other processes that I went through that my GoPro didn't record was I added a little bit more realistic weathering to the kettle. I wanted it to give uh, or to have a uh, kind of older, rustier look. Um, so what I did um, was a little bit of streaking down the sides, kind of make it look like rust. There, that's a little bit better. Um, so this process is pretty easy. It just consisted of me taking... Um, a, a few dabs of a chocolate colored uh, kind of acrylic paint, just any kind of hobby paint like the Apple Barrel stuff um, from, you know, your big box store works perfectly. And you just take a few thick dabs um, and you put it on the plastic and then you take a water moistened brush and you just streak it down. You streak it down, streak it down till you get the effect you want. Uh, and then after that dried, uh, real well. Then I used, um, I think it's called like pumpkin spice color. It was like a really kind of burnt orange color. And I streaked that down on top of that chocolate brown color uh, to kind of give it those tonal kind of rust variations. Uh, and then I sealed the whole thing in um, with a uh, matte overspray coat. All right, and pretty much the last step construction-wise was cutting off um, the bottom of a plastic bucket. Uh, I got almost exactly five inches right here, and this is effectively going to be a real easy stand uh, for the water reservoir to sit on top of. And as you can see, I have all my wires um, from, the, uh, from the misters fed through the back of the kettle uh, so they're not going to be visible at night and it keeps everything uh, nice and organized right there and then that is sitting so it's just under just a quarter inch under the lip of the kettle so it's not going to be easily visible uh, and it's going to be elevated up enough to where we're getting the max um, steam and like boiling water effect and it'll be really easy to see at night. Well let's give it a test and see if it works. All right we added some water now it's time to plug this thing in and see if it works. And after about 20 or 30 seconds, I would say that is exactly what we want. Heck yeah, that looks awesome.
Well, I thought I was done with the construction phase of this project, but as it turns out, I'm not. Um, so when I was doing the uh, test run with the misters, I noticed that the water was draining out of the bottom of the kettle, <clears throat> which that's what I wanted it to do. Unfortunately, due to where I drilled the hole, that water will now be dripping out directly on top of the uh, fake flame effects. Uh, LED that's going to be making the fire and seeing as how that unit probably isn't going to respond well to water being dripped directly on it uh, I'm going to have to make a retrofit on to the project uh, to kind of fix that so uh, my solution is let's see what do I got laying around the house here <laughs> so I'm going to take a uh, piece of uh, PVC tubing and I just shaved down one end and I'm basically just going to make like a, a water trough or a little water pipe uh, that will go directly underneath the kettle uh, to direct that water kind of off to the side and it'll be I think low profile enough to where you won't hardly be able to notice it uh, especially uh, at the uh, angle uh, everyone's going to see this as they're kind of coming up the driveway on Halloween. And uh, now that I got that piece um, cut down to the approximate you know, curve of the kettle, um, I went ahead and used a, a two-part epoxy resin to glue it into place. It can be kind of difficult to glue two different kinds of plastics together like this, and I tried a couple of different variations. You know, I tried some hot glue, which of course I knew wasn't going to work. Um, and then uh, I tried uh, some cyanoacrylate, and that wasn't very strong either. Uh, so I decided just to go with two-part epoxy resin, you know, that you can get from the hardware store. You just uh, squirt the, uh, the resin and the hardener out, you mix it up, and then 10 or 15 minutes later it sets up. Uh, I also used some exterior uh, home caulking uh, to fill in what other gaps that I had just to make sure there wasn't water leaking out anywhere else and then spray painted it black uh, to camouflage it in with the rest of the kettle. And here's the finished product. Gotta say, pretty happy with how it looks. Well, that about wraps it up. I hope you found the video to be helpful in inspiring a future Halloween project at your house. Be sure to give me a like, and if you enjoyed the content, maybe even subscribe if you'd like to see some other future Halloween builds. This is Trooper134 signing off, and I hope you have a super spooky Halloween.